Hello, people of YouTube. Today is another day on the Marcus Sparks channel. And I, yes, I know we've already done this, but we're gonna pull this motor out again. And this time we're gonna take out the rear subframe. I said this, that I was gonna take like the diff out last time, but we're gonna take out the rear subframe today where we can uh, get, so my whole plan for this is to get the whole chassis on a metal, on like a wooden cart so that there's no wheels whatsoever underneath it and it'll just be rolled around on that for right now until we can get the front subframe, rear subframe back in the car. This time around, I also want to do a lot of interior stuff. So I have an idea for a dashboard. I have an idea for a headliner. I wanna take the headliner out. I wanna do a different headliner in here. I wanna do a different dashboard. Um, I wanna get better bride seats. I want to do something about that god awful heat back seat back there. And I would love to do a full cage on the inside. Maybe not big door bars, but at least some like cage that goes up to the front, X in the back and everything like that. So we're gonna have to pull the whole interior out for all of that. So um, it's gonna be a process and we'll, we'll figure all that out later. But yeah, I would love to do all of that. So we're gonna start off by taking out the engine and stuff like that and then we'll go on to the interior because the stuff that's in here, I don't wanna break and I don't wanna take it out until I'm ready because it's it's very brittle and old. And once the stuff in here breaks, like it's hard to get this stuff again. So uh, let's go ahead and start by taking the stuff off the engine and getting it ready to pull out. We'll probably do a bunch of clip clips of that so that it's not super boring because I've already done it once. And we'll do more about taking this rear subframe out. So let's go ahead and get at it. Okay, so we got the motor here and everything underneath it. We're gonna jack up the front. We're gonna leave it sitting up. I got a, an engine hoist to borrow for today. Um, there's oil in it. We need to drain the oil. There's no coolant in it. Uh, we gotta take off the fuel lines. We gotta get the harness off. Some of it's already off, so we're just gonna take the rest of it off. Do what I did last time and just pull it off to the side over there. And then it should be pretty simple to get the rest of this out. I'll disconnect my battery, even though I have my cutoff switch in the back already, but we'll disconnect the battery altogether. And then the rest of this, we're just going to just start taking apart. Like right here, there, this one, right there. So now we can pop this one off and then the radiator can come out. Um, Actually, I got to take a couple lines off over here. But then the radiator will come out. You can store that over there somewhere. Um, I have to rearrange my storing. I have so many wheels. Anybody who wants these tractor tires and these, and these moped tires, come pick them up. I do not want these things. If, if nobody comes to pick these things up by the new year, I'm definitely throwing them away. So there'll be some tractor tires for free then. But either way, they're free. Come pick them up. I don't want them. Um... But yeah, I gotta organize this stuff, get rid of some of this stuff because I don't want it. Uh, yeah. Anybody who wants this moped motor too, it's a GY6, come pick it up. I don't need it anymore. I, uh, if I ever wanna do a moped stuff later on, I'll just get another moped. I'm actually doing a deal with the moped outside, so we're gonna get rid of that. Yeah. So let's go ahead and get onto this a little bit. Okay, guys. So, like I said, uh, we weren't going to film very much of taking this motor out this time because I've already shown it before. But it's almost ready. I drained almost all the fluids out of it. Had no coolant in it to begin with. Uh, there's no no transmission fluid. I'm draining the oil right now. Uh, I have to take the power steering fluid out of it. And the drive shaft is off. The harness is right here. The fuel lines are off it. All the vacuum lines are off. Uh, the exhaust is off. What else? I need to go inside now and disconnect the shifter and pull the shifter out so that the uh, transmission can come out and it doesn't have to like get hit by anything, taking the transmission out and stuff like that. Uh, what else? Uh, the oil lines up here need to come off. And I have to disconnect my alternator right here underneath all this stuff. Just notice that. I just got to take off the two little ground, uh, power in the ground on there. Um, the radiator came out. Yeah. Uh, it sucks not having a lift, but 
we're doing what we can without the lift but either way this project will get done but yeah that's just a little update next thing it'll be is it'll be out on the ground so uh yeah let's just keep chugging along and then we're going to get this rear subframe out tonight okay guys so after throwing out my back and taking a break to clear my phone because I ran out of space, the SR is out of the car and it is not looking that bad. It looks like I kind of just blew the cylinder in the back, uh, in the back of the block back here. That's why oil got all the way over to here. It's really prevalent on the other side. So I'm thinking that I just blew, a, blew the uh, head gasket on this thing and... Uh, yeah, nothing really, really bad happened to it. There's no holes on this side or on the other side. There's no hole on the oil pan down on the bottom or anything like that. Obviously, cylinder one does have zero compression, so we will look at that at a later date. But uh, for the guys who guessed this, you guys are right. And we are putting an RB26 into this thing. So this is a spare block that I have laying around. It's got a crack in it. We're not going to run this block. It's in between three and four. Uh, pretty typical for RB26s. So we throughout this whole process, we are going to clean the entire engine bay. Everything is going to be taken out of it. We are going to get the engine bay sprayed. We are going to put it back together. We're going to fill up holes that we don't need. As we go along with this thing, we're going to come over to this side and we'll weld that up and we'll weld this up and we'll weld that and that and these and fix the hole that I made up here and make that side look better and go through the whole thing so that literally this is going to be a fully functional drift car with a showroom engine bay paint interior the whole ball of wax like the whole thing is going to be showroom and i'm going to send this thing into corners and hopefully i don't smack into a wall because then it's going to be a big waste of time but that's the name of the game and i'm going to have fun doing it and i hope you guys have fun watching me do it so that's the end of it uh we're going to pull this rb26 end block back out we're going to put this back off to the side we're going to clean up a little bit of mess here. I got some oil and some water on the floor. We're going to pull our drive shaft out, stack that over there in the corner. Um, and then we're going to pop the rear end all out of this thing. And we're going to try to get this whole rear rear subframe out of this car so that we can uh, get it ready to swap into the other car. Because once I can get this one out, I can pull the other one and back it up over to here. And then we'll be able to swap this rear subframe into that car and put that rear subframe in here so that I can take it apart, take the bushings out, take all the arms off, get new bushings, get new arms for some of the rear, and get that all set back up in here so that we can get the whole rear subframe back together with a new differential and new axles and all that stuff. So... I talked to a friend today, and they said that I should be okay to run the RB, the S chassis differential, but what I will need to do is I will need to upgrade the axles and the stub shafts in the differential, which I believe 350Z dry, uh, axles and stub shafts should fit right into this differential. And if they don't, then we'll have to make a little modification, and maybe we get a 300ZX diff because it's... I mean, it's a Z and it's a Z, so I would hope Nissan would have made like a kit or something to adapt those into it. Or I know somebody makes a kit to adapt it into it. So we'll have to do all that. Um, other than that, the rear end should be pretty solid. I do want to use a different differential though, but I will use a the same diff cover and possibly the same diff housing as I am right now. I just need to get shims and new bearings and everything to backlash and to uh, re-bearing this differential because I want this whole re drivetrain to be absolutely solid. Like the, the only thing that's going to happen is I'm going to snap an axle or I'm going to snap some wheel studs because it's making too much power or like maybe I, I, I don't know. I want the drivetrain to be perfect this time because i'm sick and tired of breaking these motors and then not having a motor and not having the car running so uh we will be doing that 
But let's go ahead and take out this rear subframe now. We're going to push the car a little forward, and then we'll bring it back later on when we get the uh, rear subframe out so we can put it off to the side, and then we'll be able to uh, look at the rest of it. But, yeah, let's push the car up and then get the rear subframe out. Okay, so we're having one problem with taking out this rear subframe under here, and that is this area right in there. So that thing right there is the T for the or the y the t the y whatever you guys want to call it for the rear brakes and i wish i could just slide the rear brakes out and disconnect the calipers and just kind of put them off to the side and hang them up from somewhere but it doesn't look like that because this factory bracket right here does not allow you to slide it out so nevertheless we're gonna have to take the brakes off and we're gonna have to let the fluid drain out. That means that we're going to have to bleed the hydro again, which should be okay. It's not like anybody's gonna pull it. And once it's once the, this line is off and once I get the front up and I take the front off, I might just take the hydro out just in case so that nobody gets in there or whatever and decides like, oh, let me just pull this thing and then they go break my hydro because you're not supposed to pull those when there's no fluid in them. So we're gonna disconnect this back brake. We're gonna take off the bolts that hold it in, the three up here, one there, one right here, one over there on both sides, and then this one big one, and then disconnect the struts and the whole rear subframe should just come right out of the car. Um, should be a pretty simple de-installation. And then we'll have the rear subframe on the ground so that we can swap it over later this week and uh yeah we might even take out the gas tank because this thing is full you can't hear that this thing is like full of e85 and honestly i kind of want to just take it out and give it to somebody else that's actually going to use it like i have a friend at work who actually uses the 85 and it's 335 so i'll just give it to him and he can do what he wants with it maybe he can mix it with some brand new e85 and this old e85 and get a little bit of extra gas out of his car but yeah um so let's go ahead and take off these brakes and just get to this okay so the rear subframe is ready to come out we had to do even more with the brake lines than i even than i even originally thought so we had to break them off of that t to get them through the actual thing actual holes because those holes right in there right there is actually part of the chassis, not part of the subframe. So this side, the passenger side, JDM passenger side, we're gonna have to snake out from underneath the car. Um, but we're gonna try to keep these lines intact because these are still good brake lines. And I just wanna be able to put those back in when we go ahead and reassemble this whole thing and put it all back together. So let's go ahead and pull this thing out now and then get it all onto the ground and then we'll go over really quick on what we're going to do with this one and why we're changing it and uh that'll probably be the end of it for today uh we'll get the rear ramp we'll like put the rear we'll put the jack back underneath the rear and like bring it back down so that it's sitting on the jack and the jack stands can be out from underneath it and we'll get the dolly thing together this weekend and then we'll put the car on the rest of that and take the front subframe out as well and get that one all set um if we have the dolly we do it tonight but we don't so we're not going to but yeah this is the rest of it and hopefully uh this is an okay video and explaining what we're doing okay so we got subframe we got engine we got chassis we got front subframe Soon this will all just be a shell. And then we're going to start putting it back together. Um, the rear subframe is out now. The reason we're taking this one out is because this has the hikus bar in the rear. And I do not like how flimsy these hikus bars are. So what we're doing is we're switching this from a regular 240SX S chassis to a, uh, or from a 180SX s chassis to a 240 sx s chassis um and the reason for that is because the rear subframe here in the back where this hikus goes 
is different. Instead of it mounting to the subframe like this with one bolt on either side and then having these tiny little arms that go back and forth, it's actually got like a slot in the subframe over here where it bolts into and that goes to a piece that goes around the knuckle here for extra strength. And that's what I want. And then <clears throat> all the parts that we're getting for the new rear subframe are GK Tech. And uh, what we're going to be doing with that is GK Tech sells upper control arms, the toe arms, the traction arms. Uh, they do sell a lower control arm, but I don't think I want that because that also has like drop something in it, which I don't want the rear lower. I want the rear, I want the rear lower, but the car can't take it because then I'm going to have to uh, destroy the inside of my fenders. And I don't really want to do that. Later on, we might because the chassis is all apart right now. So the whole car might get painted as well. I, I don't really know yet. The bill is already really high for this car. So um, the less stuff that we can do extra, the, the better it's going to be. I have a whole list put out of what I'm trying to do with the car. And I kind of don't want to stray that far from the list besides like engine trans, differential, getting the interior together a little bit, doing the whole uh, under chassis, like subframe, front, rear, uh, and all that kind of stuff back together, and then getting the body kit finally on it with a BCL wing. So the getting tires and lowering the car more and doing this and doing that isn't super important to me. It's really getting the car running and driving again. So that's the main point. But other than that, the... That's the main reason that we're switching the rear subframes. Um, and just so that now that this one is out, we can take the other one out of the other car, swap them back and forth. And what we'll do is we're going to end up um, doing all the bushings, all the bushings around the parts that aren't going to get exchanged, which like the lower control arms and then the subframe bushings are pretty much the only ones that are not going to get changed. Um we're going to need to beef up this rear end. So, like I said, my friend said we could use this differential. We're just going to have to get new stub shafts and new axles to support the power. Um, that's a big thing there. We are going to get a better sway bar for the rear because this thing is definitely going to squat a lot after having all this power put down in it. And the, the horsepower goal is around 500. The motor probably will be able to make 800 but we're only going to run it at five, maybe six if I feel frisky, but I really just want a cool 500, reliable, go out to the track, beat it up, bring it back, change the oil, and go right back out and beat it up again. Uh, super, super reliable tune, super reliable engine build. Uh, everything inside is going to be forged, and it's just going to be a crazy build that not a lot of people do because it's an expensive one and I get that that's why it's going to take a while to do this so with that said I'm going to get out of here because it's like two o'clock in the morning now for me and I just want to get home I got work tomorrow morning and yeah so other than that guys the car is slowly coming along and we are going to be changing the entire look of this car from the underside to the engine bay to the exterior. This side is pretty much going to stay the same. So we're going to leave these stickers here. Maybe add something on the, on the side skirt when we put the body kit on it. Uh, that window is going to stay the same. The front is going to stay the same. This sticker, that sticker. The hood we might change to the vented hood for extra ventilation. Because I don't want the motor overheating and blah, blah, blah. This whole side here though is going to be completely changed. So from the driver's door, from the passenger door here, back is going to be one big vinyl that they're going to stick on. Yes, we are going to have an anime girl still on the side. Yeah, I know a lot of people don't like it, but I do. So we're going to do what I want because it's my car. Um, but yes, there is going to be an anime girl. There's going to be kanji. There's going to be space. There's going to be a whole theme. I have it all set out. This was the cheap version. The next version is going to be way more expensive and it's going to look even cooler. So, uh, yeah, just lots of plans for this car and I just want to get it up and get start working on it. 
I have another project out back that I'm trying to work on too. I don't know which one's going to get done first, this one or that one. I don't really know. But overall, guys, that's about it. If you guys like the video, don't forget to subscribe. Hit the like button, comment, share it, do all the good stuff. And I hope to see you guys tomorrow, which is Sunday, at Adam LZ's open house. And it's going to be awesome. Hopefully we have a good time there and everything goes awesome. Later.